Uh, welcome, dear learners. Uh, I am Professor Mona Khare, uh, currently heading the Department of Educational Finance and also associated with the Center for Policy Research in Higher Education at the National Institute of Educational Planning and Administration, popularly known as NEPA in New Delhi. It is my great pleasure to be talking to you today on a very, very important uh, aspect that has been included and emphasized in the National Education Policy 2020, that is skills training, vocational education, and graduate employability in India. Now, what I thought was before we start talking specifically about the National Education Policy 2020, let us very quickly look at the context of the very um, reason as to why skills and employability emerged as a major challenge in the country and across the globe. Now, needless to say that as the very concept of development shifted from economic development to social development and later to human development, investments in education became paramount for two reasons. One, the quality of life, the higher earnings, and also the quality of jobs that it was rendering to the educated youth. That is how the new wave of linking education to skills and vocationalization, work-based skills and vocationalization gained importance in the 20th century onwards and became more strong in the 21st century. Now, as uh, the literature uh, is coming forth uh, evidencing the closeness between higher and higher uh, levels of learning with better development, not just for the self, but also for the whole community and for the whole globe, as has been uh, em embedded in the Sustainable Development Goals of 2030, the importance of higher education integrating with skills and vocationalization is growing day by day. So it is in this context, let us very quickly see what are the challenges that the educated youth in India have been facing as far as their uh, employability or job readiness is concerned. Now, if we go by uh, these statistics, the very first thing that comes to fore is the demographic dividend that India is quoted to have. Now, this demographic dividend can be exploited only with better educated and better skilled youth. However, the industry is aghast with the kind of graduates that we are producing today. Also, the, uh, the statistics prove that more than 50% of the Indian youth are either not befitting the skills that are in demand by the industry sector or the quality of skills that they have with them are not up to the standards as demanded by the industry. There are three kinds of gaps that emerged in one of the studies that we conducted in CPRHE at NEPA. And these three gaps were related to awareness gaps, the perception gap, and the third one was the skills gap. Now, as far as the awareness gap is concerned, this gap relates to the knowledge regarding the, uh, the job market, the knowledge regarding what kind of jobs are going to be available in future, what kind of opportunities are waiting for the educated youth, what kind of skills are going to be in demand. So that kind of awareness is missing or is less as compared to what the industry sector is uh, projecting at. After the awareness gap comes the perception gap. Now the perception regarding the importance of a particular skill, be it the work-based skill or be it the generic skills, is also uh, missing between the student, that is the learners, the teachers, that is the, uh, the, uh, the human force which is behind providing any kind of skills training to our youth and the employers who are demanding the skills from these learners. So those kind of perception gaps also exist. And lastly, of course, the skills gap. 
Now, skills gap also, uh, if we see, can be divided into uh, three components, the knowledge and technical skills. Uh, so the employers are um, reasonably okay with the kind of knowledge and technical skills that our graduates come with. Let us now come to the National Education Policy 2020 and what kind of a perspective it holds uh, with regards to scale and what kind of strategies uh, does it propose. Now, I would like to call the National Education 2020 as to be uh, unique and forward-looking as well as comprehensive. Why unique? Not because it has come after a long wait of 35 years, but unique because for the first time, the policy is trying to bring integrated elements of knowledge, skill building and vocationalization at all levels together. Why I also uh, feel like calling it forward looking is because uh, it is more futuristic in the sense it is aligning itself to the four goals uh, that are enshrined in the Sustainable Development Goals of 2020, that is quality and equitable learning for all and lifelong opportunities of learning to be provided to all people. It is the four pillars that basically form the foundation of the national education policy, which can be described by four E's of equity, uh, enrollment, uh, employability, and excellence. Now, all these four E's uh, in some way or the other reflect the United Nations goals of um, bringing uh, better quality, sustainable development and lives for all individuals. Very quickly, let us look at the few major principles on which uh, the uh, education policy is uh, based or it is enshrined in the national education policy. The very first one being uh, the recognizing, identifying and fostering the unique capabilities and capacities of each individual student. Now it is for the first time the, the policy is saying that every individual has specific talents and it is important to recognize, identify and nurture them. The second aspect which is uh, very new in the policy is the multidisciplinarity and skill based education which has to be brought in together at all levels. The third aspect which is uh, striking is the extensive use of technology and training in digital skills also to be an integral part of learning. And the fourth is respect for diversity and local context. So for the first time, we are not just looking at global skills, but we are also giving equal importance to our local art, heritage and culture. And this also to be a part of learning at all levels of education. Let us take a very uh, quick look on uh, some of the important elements that will help us to uh, generate the kind of skills that the 21st century is, um, is actually demanding from the uh, youth population today. Let me also share with you a simple concept of employment and employability. Often employment and employability are used interchangeably. But are these two the same is a question that one must ask oneself. Now, if I have to answer in just one sentence, employment and employability are certainly not the same. Now, employability is uh, basically an individual's uh, preparedness for the world of work in total, in totality. So it comprises of a set of achievements, in skills, in understandings, in personal attributes uh, that can make graduates to gain employment, to remain in employment, to progress in employment, but also contribute in a meaningful fashion to the community and to the global development as well, aiming at sustainable development that flows down the generations. So this is how uh, the concept of employability has to be understood and this is how mm, the concept of skills uh, delivery 
has been encompassed in the National Education Policy 2020. Uh, the second aspect of uh, skilling uh, that one has to understand is the pace at which the uh, new skills are coming into feature or are coming into focus with the fourth industrial revolution and now the fifth industrial revolution knocking the doors, uh, which is uh, based on um, IT based high technologies, AI, that is artificial intelligence, big data management, etc, etc. So how uh, this space of uh, uh, change, the kind of dynamism that the industry sector is uh, experiencing by way of uh, putting up uh, the demand for uh, new skills every day. Uh, so on this point also, the national education policy has tried to uh, provide some kind of a guidance and direction as to how we can uh, tackle uh, this very aspect of being responsive to the needs of the new industry. Let me now come to specific areas uh, in terms of skill development, vocational education. They are also able to imbibe many of the generic skills which uh, we just uh, talked about are missing in our youth. Uh, so at the lower levels of education, we are trying to integrate with some foundational skills, some generic skills. At secondary and senior levels of education, we are trying to move, move towards more functional skills. However, it is for the first time that even at the higher education level, in a concrete fashion, um, the skills-based education is being integrated at all uh, the levels, be it undergraduate teaching, be it postgraduate teaching, or be it even PhDs, doctoral level teaching. Now, at all levels, we are trying to in, not just integrate uh, skill building with each of these subjects, but uh, a separate uh, degree and diploma level programs in vocationalization are also proposed uh, to be started. Uh, so this is how we are trying to build a continuum of skill delivery across all levels of education. Also, what is very interesting to learn here is uh, we are also trying to break the silos. We found that training was not part of higher education system at all. Uh, in fact, there were uh, institutions like ITIs or polytechnics or even technical education, engineering and professional education, which um, had a component of skill uh, training, apprenticeship learning. All of these had uh, a major content of skill building and training, but the general academic education at the higher education level was considered or was expected to be knowledge producing and imparting knowledge to the young learners by way of providing both horizontal and vertical mobility to the graduates. Now, when I say horizontal mobility, we are providing for uh, students to move from general academic streams to vocational streams. There are greater choices and freedom and flexibility given to them to uh, make a choice uh, of the subjects that they would want to study, which may be a combination of science, of arts, of music, designs of uh, postgraduate education or higher education. Uh, that is, we begin with, let us say, a three-year undergrad program or a four-year undergrad program with a one-year postgraduate program. So all kinds of uh, combinations and choices are being given uh, to the students with greater flexibility to move between academic education, work-based education, skill-based education, and vocational education, thereby uh, breaking the silos between the two. The third aspect that I would like to bring to fore is multilingualism and multidisciplinarity. For the first time, uh, there has been a specific emphasis on bringing out literature uh, reading material and teaching in regional languages, also promoting uh, English language and foreign language learning in the universities and also at senior levels of schooling. Uh, multidisciplinary learning, interdisciplinary uh, curriculum development uh, and multidisciplinary large-scale universities to be open which provide 
a more uh, holistic kind of a learning, more uh, diverse kind of an exposure to the our learners is also in the fray. Then comes the third aspect that is experiential learning. Now, uh, how experiential learning can be promoted is uh, the national education uh, policy proposes three areas. One of course is the work-based learning skills. The second is art-based skills and the third is sports skills. So all three kinds of experiences to be combined, curricular and extracurricular experiences to be combined to give a holistic um, personality development opportunities to our learners. The fourth aspect is uh, in a big way, a boost to higher education vocationalization has been given. Not just uh, by uh, uh, integrating skill-based learning at every uh, level of uh, higher education and all the courses that are being taught in the universities and colleges, but very specifically aligning higher education to vocational education by developing or aligning it to the national skills qualifications framework. Now, this skills qualification framework, uh, which has been developed for a vocational, uh, vocation based education uh, for at 10 levels of education, which begins from the secondary, high secondary levels and goes up to the PhD levels. At 10 levels, uh, descriptors have been given which are sector specific, which are industry specific, um, uh, professional skills, core skills, uh, technical skills, which are required at various levels of workmanship in that particular sector or industry has been provided and developed uh, and the not just the curriculum has to be linked uh, to these uh, descriptors but also the evaluation has to be linked to this, this uh, these uh, descriptors. So in a way standardize uh, the skills training aspect. Uh, so the national uh, uh, occupational standards which come into picture over here uh, how the Sector Specific Skills Council under the overarching umbrella of the National Skill Development uh, Commission uh, has come out with national occupational standards to be linked with the National Skills Qualifications Framework and how they are going to be the guideposts of skills training and vocational education at 10 levels is something very interesting uh, in this new education policy. Uh, also, for the first time, uh, the, uh, the policy talks about recognizing prior learning. So, uh, there are uh, people who have learned through uh, informal means. There are uh, students who come from various backgrounds and uh, uh, learn from um, in a traditional methods, informal methods by their uh, forefathers, by their parents or maybe other informal means. For the first time, uh, the skilled universities per se have been opened. Uh, the purpose of these skilled universities is to give degree and diploma based education right till the doctoral level only in uh, very specific uh, vocational uh, subjects. Next aspect is how we can strengthen the student support system uh, in the universities and colleges. The next uh, aspect that the new education policy is trying to build is the new age skills and how to integrate digital learning and IT based uh, skills at every level. So uh, for example, the Ministry of Electronics and Communication has started centers of excellence in various universities to impart uh, high end skills in IT and electronics to the students. The next aspect is building in the entrepreneurial culture. So startup hubs, centers of innovation, uh, how can these startups be funded? All these are uh, part of the national education policy. And lastly, as to how uh, international uh, organizations can also be brought in uh, to uh, 
impart various kinds of uh, skills um, to our students is also in the fray. Uh, the two major ministries which are uh, working hand in hand to achieve this is the Ministry of Education uh, certainly in the lead but working very closely with the Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship. Uh, the, the two together in the recent budget are proposed to launch about 5,000 skill centers in the very next year. Uh, also is the e-portal, the virtual lab, 750 virtual labs that are proposed to be created in science and mathematics, uh, 75 skilling e-labs uh, which are proposed to be created. Uh, all of these uh, give greater credential to whatever has been proposed or suggested in the National Education Policy 2020. However, if we look at all the various uh, things which have been uh, suggested to be implemented, it is too much on the platter. Three important areas or three important concerns that one has to uh, keep in mind if we at all want to implement all of these proposed strategies in their true spirit. One is a proper mission mode, uh, a proper vision and uh, a proper mission to be able to uh, embrace all of these proposals or all of these uh, suggestions which have been made in the national education policy. The second is the acceptability to this change, uh, acceptability to this change of integrating training and skills to um, collegiate and university teaching. And third, very important is to see how this entire uh, training uh, skills training and vocational education integration doesn't uh, impact the equity and inclusion uh, in an adverse fashion. Because if we look at the current scenario, the kind of disparities and distortions that uh, exist today in our higher education system can be categorized into uh, four kinds. So we see uh, disciplinary disparities, there are certain disciplines like engineering or professional um, education which is uh, very much in demand by the industry sector as far as employment and jobs is concerned and it is also projected that more than 60 percent of the new jobs are going to come in the services sector in the coming years. Uh, the, the second uh, disparity that we see is in terms of regional disparities. So we see uh, that um, there are disparities that exist in terms of institutions which are placed in remote areas, rural areas. Um, the quality disparity is, quality distortion is one again, a uh, very um, a big problem that we are facing. And the third is the social and gender disparity. So how to bring uh, students from the marginalized section and also women into the four of skill based vocational learning and training at the higher education level. On that note, uh, I thank you all very much for your patient hearing uh, and I hope that uh, this kind of a 360 degree change that the national education policy is proposing uh, by way of integrating skills training to education, not just at the curricular level or at the pedagogical level, but also at the evaluation and outcomes level is something which is going to challenge us in the coming future. Thank you very much.